Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and I hope you're looking forward to another episode of me messing around on the railway um, it's a continuation from last week as we always do but before we start the population here at the Northeastern has grown by one as you can see, we have a new figure talking to Sid. And if I just turn him round, it's good old Charlie Chapman. He's flown in via Pan Am through the letterbox. No, seriously. <laughs> Um, yes, I got him off of eBay through Osborne Models. Um, he's the same place, same people who did Vera. So yeah, it's good to have uh, a unique character on the railway. So where do we go from here? Well, I'm guessing. It's time to fill all these rooms with furniture and fit the bases. And uh, once that's done, we can start thinking about joining these two buildings together and making up the roofs and canopy. So we're getting closer. So let's mosey on over to the bench. It's taken me a while to think about what I'm going to put in each room. Um, so I've made up a, a little bit of a list here and to see if there's any similar items so I can do batch build if you like. Um, so we've got the porter's room uh, which needs a telephone, armchair, locker, desk, shelves, possibly a table, a uh, refreshments room, we've got the bar, counter, benches, chairs, table and till, ticket office, Telephone, desk, chairs, locker, lamp, safe. Now, a safe, not made a safe before, or a radio. But would a radio be in the ticket office? Probably not. But the station master might have a radio. Hmm. Anyway, station master's telephone, lamp, desks, bookcase, cupboard, and the waiting room will just need benches, tables. And some other small little details, maybe a flower vase uh, and a small cabinet. So that's the list. Um, so it's quite a few items there to make. I'm hoping I can do it all in one failed swoop, as it were. Right. So what I'm going to start with is the telephone because I need three of them and here's my template phone I've kept a hold of this um, just in case um, I decide to make phones again and I'm glad I did because there is one well there's three needed for this build now I'm governed by what I can put in the rooms to the size of the rooms so here we have the porters comp left luggage and here we have the refreshments room. So these are the two rooms I'm going to try and focus on first. Now, I've been scouring my little drawing pack to look for pieces to put in the room. Now when I did um, the cottage, these were the items that went into the cottage, the sofa, the armchair, the cabinet, the table, uh, bookshelves and a TV. Remember when I did the TV? TV you can't see. Hmm. Right. And uh, this is all the furniture that went into the um, Jarrah Road station. Notice we have a counter there. So luckily we can maybe um, make that again for the refreshments room. 
So, we have our bits and pieces. Now it's time to make them. Is I'm just using a bit of plastic and I'm just skimming the sides down to, to about two millimeters. And then once I get, get the width right, then we can start shaping it into a foam. Just really cutting that back a bit, making it a bit longer than what I need. And check it with the rule. Yeah, so it's roughly about two millimeters, but it's not quite long enough. I've just got to skim that back bit back a bit. Right, so we got the width. The width is roughly two millimetres. So what we want to do now is come in two millimetres and just put a chamfer at 45 degrees, but leaving at least a mil and a half up from the front. So you're not just, you see, just shaving that off a little bit, but leaving a little bit there, because you've got to chamfer it again. You've got to have one chamfer, then chamfer it again. This is going to be a little bit tricky, so we do that two mil and just shave that bit off. And leave about one and a half to two mil up. Right, so as you can see, I've got a little bit more to take off, so it's quite a bit to chamfer because you've got to chamfer it again. So now we put we do half of that again with a deeper chamfer. This is where the dial is going to be. Keep looking at the edge, take a bit more off. Get that looking like a foam from the side. Look at my template one. Yeah, that's just about nearly right there. So we'll do the same with the others. Half. So we've done a chamfer, then we've gone a chamfer again. This is what we should end up with. You can see that? It's two chamfers there. Right, so now behind that sh first chamfer that we did, we could put a little V in. Now that V is for the telephone handle, as it were, or the telephone receiver. So we just put a little tiny V in there. This is where the receiver is going to sit. Barely see it. You can see the little V, the V's in there. So we'll do the same to the others. And then you should end up with something like this. As you can see you've got the V there, and that's for the receiver on all of them. Right, so the next step is where you've cut the V, you want to cut a really sharp V, just about one half a mil away from there. And that's going to form the back of the foam. So you really need to cut deep. Because once you've painted it, that's where you're going to cut the foam off. At 90 degrees, just slightly off. Just run the blade through there, nice and sharp, but don't cut all the way through. As you can see there, I've cut, but I haven't cut all the way through. Because we still need to be able to hold that to paint. The final piece for shaping 
this telephone is where you've cut the first V just chamfer a little bit down the sides just take a little chamfer off there just to give it a little point if it were so just take that edge off basically that sharp edge just take it off Right, so that's the phone shapes now all done. So the next thing to do is to add the receivers. With the receivers, the best way to do it is to cut a long piece of copper wire and then push down, like I've done there, either side so it forms a slight curve and then once the super glue goes off, trim it down to 3mm to that there. Um, and that's how easy it is. Hold it down. Wait for it to go off and then trim to size. Looks like before you paint them. So I'm going to paint two black and one red. And with a little bit of paint that completes the telephones. Um, all I have to do now is cut them from this plastic and stick them to their desks. And then just touch up uh, any of the black paint or red paint. Uh, on the back faces when we cut through. So that's the telephones now done. The next thing on the list is the desk lamps and what you need for that is a straw, uh, a three mil diameter straw, a piece of wire, copper wire, and some plastic left over from your kits and as you can see I've started to divide these piece of plastic up into three segments and uh, the segments are nine millimeters so this piece of plastic will form the base of the desk lamp and uh, what I'm doing I'm just scoring right through careful not to cut right through because these items are so small you're going to need to handle them for painting etc and gluing so I'm just taking the cut as close to the edge as possible without cutting through and then coming back about a millimetre and a half and then putting a chamfer on it and then we'll do the same this side as well put a chamfer on it and this will then form the base of those desk lamps off once you've cut through so that's what we're looking for Right, so the next thing we want to do is drill a 0.5 hole into the centre of each one of these bases. So what I've done, just measure the centre and we're just going to pop a hole in there that's ready for the copper wire once we've shaped it. And, uh, it's roughly 4.5 mil. Bang in the middle. Now we cut the straw. So we want the straw at least eight millimeters in width. So we'll just cut a couple of pieces because we're not using the full amount of straw. So what we'll do, we'll cut it and then we'll cut it straight down the middle. Now we move on to shaping the copper wire which will then form the, the uh, bracketry between the base and the lamp. So as you can see I've already 
pre-bent it 90 degrees. It's roughly about three millimeters that. So then we've got to hold it flat in the pincers there. Nice and tight. Grab the three mil drill, put it alongside it and then form it round like so until we end up with a swan neck with a 90 degree angle on it, see? Now if it's not quite right we can straighten up the 90 degree bend so it's in line with the swan neck. Now you've got to get this as small as possible. I've had a couple of goes already and the first attempt was way too big but I am getting it small and small. You want to get it as small as possible. Right, so we have our swan neck. The next thing we want to do is just as the bend finishes just here we need to bend it down over so we need to hold that just there maybe with a pair of tweezers I think maybe better and bend that not quite 90 probably about 45 degrees so we can form that shape there And then we just need to trim that to fit into the um, base of the lamp. And then we'll end up with something like this. If I just pop that in there for now, you can see what I mean. So we'll have something like that if it'll stay still. And obviously we can still manipulate it a little bit once it's glued in position but we should have something like that and this is what it looks like with the copper wire now glued in place they're all roughly about the same height same shape so it's just a case of adding the pieces of straw and um, which is quite easy the straw's already got the hole in it's already been pre-shaped so it's a case of just pushing that onto the copper wire which will then form the actual lampshade itself and then because of the 90 degree angle on the copper wire we can use that to glue that in place to form the lamp and this is what the lamps look like fully assembled so I'm just about to paint them now I'm going to paint the bases in a bronze and the actual lampshades themselves I'll paint them in a green um, like you see in the, the old movies and uh, the underside will be painted in a yellow and I shall have a look at them once they're all done. So I'm just painting the bases bronze, which is not too far away from the plastic colouring already. And here we have the finished lamps ready to go onto the desks once I've made, made them. Uh, once I've separated them I've just got to touch up the ends with a little bit more of that metallic bronze. But there we go. That's the desk lamps done. So the, ne the next item is not on the list and that's a tight rail. Now I have made one of these before uh, for high shield station and uh, what I'm doing is I'm just planing this piece of plastic so I've got a nice flat edge to work with um, and then we can start to shape it into a typewriter so what I'm going to do now is flatten off this face 
and I'll do the same with this. What I'm doing, just taking off that sharp edge there and creating a flat, just a couple of milli flat, like so. So if we have a closer look at it, you've got a flat edge there, a flat edge there, and a flat edge there, but it's round over the top. But I'm not worried about that at the moment because we've still got a little bit more fettling to do with this piece of plastic. So just Taking that down, that down. Right, so. So that's all the flats done. So we don't want this to be too big. No bigger than just over a couple of feet. So we shall say about 8mm. Right, so we'll mark it at 8mm. Then we'll mark it again just a couple of mil from the back and then what we'll do there, we'll just go quite hard with the scalpel just about a millimetre and a half down and then we'll do the same here but at an angle and just take that little piece out So we'll take that little piece out and that's going to be for the piece with the roller that has the paper on it. So we'll just curve that a little bit so we can get a piece of, little piece of toothpick in there. So, so we'll just put a little tiny V in there. Same there, that way, and then we shall cut that out as well. Because that's where the strikers will hit, or where the letter strikers will hit the paper. So now we just got to chamfer that away, create a nice flat on it. For the keyboards or for the yeah for the keys. So we have to come down a bit more. We have got a long way to go yet. Maybe another chamfer. with the way that that's shaped as you can see there so we've got the recess for the arm that holds the paper we've got the chamfer that coming down to the front so what I might do now is just take another little chamfer about a millimetre half away from the edge and just press at an angle and cut that off So now we need a little toothpick now with a piece of paper on it. So here is our toothpick. Um, what I've done with the toothpick is I've put it into uh, my drill and I've sanded it down to roughly about 1.5 mil thick and I've stuck a little tiny piece of paper on it, A4 size roughly. And um, what will happen now is I'll just measure up the size and then stick that in the V that we made earlier with the piece of paper sitting up like that. And now we have a typewriter. As you can see I've gone for a darker colour, a gloss 15 blue. Um, yeah, just make out all the keys, piece of paper and uh, that's another job finished. All I've got to do is cut it away from the plastic when we come to stick it onto the table. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, my representation of a typewriter. The next thing I want to do is have a go at making this radio. Now, uh, on a recent trip to the South Devon Railway, I saw this radio in the booking office. 
and it is huge it's roughly about two and a half foot across and nearly three foot tall and about a foot and a half deep so I'm gonna have a go at making one of these radios not sure what make or model it is but I'm gonna make one of these and uh, put it in Sid's office and here's our drawing uh, with all the sizes so it's roughly two and a half feet wide three and a half feet tall and about a foot or so just over a foot in depth and um, here's all the pieces so what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue uh, two two mil pieces of card together with these two little pieces here and this thin piece of um, clear sheet which I'm going to use to go between these two bits of card because one's going to have the dials on and the other card is just going to have the, the grill. Uh, the key to making this radio is like I said before is the layers so I've stuck two pieces of card together get my thickness 4mm and then we've got this piece of card which is the um, grill and the dial background so what I'll do is I'll paint that cream paint that red wait for the paint to dry then I'll glue this piece of clear plastic over the top of that and then I shall then glue this delicate piece of card here on top of that and that will then give us the radio as it were. I've now painted the first layer of card, the speaker and the um, radio stations there for tuning and uh, I've used a MAT28 which is a beige colour I've wiped it on and then brushed it off finely because we want to still be able to see the lines once the, the fascia of the radio has been put on and then I've just used a cocktail stick to put in that very very fine white line so we shall let that dry before we fit the glaze piece and then we can put the actual um, radio frame on the top I've now stuck the clear plastic onto the first layer of card as it were and um, and then I've put the fascia on top of that and that's glued so the next stage is to glue all three corners or three sides with some super glue and that will harden off the card and then I'll be able to sand the edges flat and then round these corners over to give it the, the shape as we saw in the photograph now as I'm using some dials for the radio, I'm using some fine scale uh, track pins and uh, I've already pre-drilled the four holes um, using a 0.8 drill bit and I'm just pushing these into the radio for now and then just use a tiny bit of super glue along the edges away from the glazing that's already in there. So I'm just putting these tiny pins in place. With the corners now sanded over, it's time to paint the actual radio to bring it to life. I'm just using various colours to try and match the photograph a um, little bit of yellow a little bit of um, matte 37 so sanding those corners over has really made the sides really flat I don't know if you can see that it's quite flat those sides so I don't have to put another strip of paper around um, like I would have done and I'll paint the back the same colour and then once this is all dry I've just got to give it a coat of gloss give it a shine and 
பார்த்து மட்டும் As you can see, it's, it's transforming it already. Welcome to the BBC Home Service, where we shall continue with making the furniture for all the rooms. We shall use card, we shall use glue, we shall use paper, we shall use, uh, yes, our imagination. And eventually, all the rooms will be finished. Thank you for listening in. I have been measuring up for the bar which is going to go into the um, refreshments room. And um, I want to try and keep it as small as possible so I can get as many tables and chairs in there. So I'm going to go for roughly about 20 millimeters wide and about 30 millimeters deep. So it just takes up one full corner, as it were, just up to the edge of this window there. So it just takes up that little corner. And in the rest of the room, we'll have the tables and chairs. So we've done a little sketch here. Um, so it's 30 mil to the end. 18 mil wide um, it might be about 20 mil by the time you add the top because obviously the top's got to be a little bit wider 8 to 9 mil in width and 14 millimeters high now I have made a bar before which is this one and lo and behold it's around about the same size but that had a curved top and this is going to have a 45 degree angle top and then come back on itself. So I might even make it a little bit uh, bigger than that as not on the length but on the, on the width. But uh, we shall see how it pans out when I fold this up because this is what's left over from the panelling in the rooms. So I'm measuring this, and this is 25 mil from there to there. So if I bend that at 45, thereabouts, so it reaches the 30 millimeter mark, which is there, and I bend that again at 45 degrees, and then I know where to cut this off, which would be roughly on this panel here. If I turn this the right way up, you can see the actual size of the bar. But what I might do is, is I'll cut it off at this panel here, where we have the two um, edges meet. So I'll make splice it down the middle of there, and that will become the bar. I think that's what I'll do. So it'll be a bit, little bit wider than the original drawing, but the width of the bar looking at it from the front should stay the same. I have cut some bits and pieces here so we have the base, the top of the bar and some shelves which I'll cut to size once I've um, glued this base in. So I've put a little bit of um, rocket glue in there and uh, I just want to keep it flush to the bottom of the base Make sure all the glue takes all the edges, and you've probably noticed I have notched the lower half of the bar here and here so that it goes over the um, skirting boards that we've put in so we don't have any gaps down the sides of the bar. So I should just let the glue take. Now that it's all assembled, I'm just adding some paint now to the bar top. 
and uh, I've mixed a few colours together to get this colour. Um, I've used matte 63, a little bit of matte 60 and a tiny touch of black just to darken it and uh, it looks like a mahogany top so I'm quite happy with that and I've also added a little bit of gloss varnish just to give it a little bit of a sheen so that's one of the things from the list so the next thing I want to work on is the till as you can see I've made one of these before and uh, I think if I remember rightly it was just layers of card with this clear flexible plastic in between two pieces of one mil card and then uh, two pieces of one mil card there that's been chamfered so let's have a look so what I'm going to do I'm going to make as before I'm just going to make this slightly longer so I can trim it and work with it um, so here's the very very fine flexible plastic so I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on here just let that dry for a little bit just give it a because you don't want the plastic if you can help it go stop take some of that take some of that off because it looks a bit much on there okay, and just sit that on there so we'll, do, we'll let that dry for a little bit and we'll cut it off there so we can manhandle it and then we have another piece of card which we will glue over the top of that same again a little bit of super glue by the way this is uh, six mil strips see I'm just trying to get it to dry out a little bit and then that will then sandwich that piece just press one that's that bit sandwiched okay so at this point it's the ideal opportunity if you're going to add some little tiny pieces or, or tiny bits of paint so it looks like numbers have popped up so I might just do that and then what we'll do we'll get a one mil drill bit and then bend it over like so and then that will form the top of the till where you can actually see the numbers if you like So now we have our three pieces of card which has now sandwiched the flexible clear strip and as you can see I just put two little white dots of paint there and I've chamfered the front edge there and I've got this little bit of two mil card and I've chamfered it to a point and then that will be glued on there to the front of the till so this will be for the that side so I shall glue that on there and as you can see as I turn it around you got a nice chamfer front and that will be where all the keys are for operating the till before I paint it I thought I'd show you it first so you got a rough idea how this till has turned out so as you can see there that's the sandwiched pieces the three bits of card then there was a 2mm piece of card which was chamfered 
and then we've got a 1mm piece of card and then a 2mm piece of card which forms the base of the till and for the front I've just stuck another piece of card on the front for the drawer and uh, that is now ready for painting. Now I've just had a quick look online for the colours of these tills um, they're quite various silver, bronze, uh, mahogany, a dark brown um, any colour you can think of you can paint these so I'm going to go with a dark brown a really dark brown I think and then um, we'll paint some little tiny dots on there for the keys and uh, that will be finished and there's the till fully painted with all its buttons and I've given it a brass drawer as well so that's uh, almost ready to stick into the refreshments room but first of all we've got a figure here in a pair of jeans so what I want to do is well change the jeans for a skirt now I've not done this before I'm not sure if it's gonna work so I'm doing I just put a tiny bit of super glue around the top half of the legs and I've already cut a piece of very fine paper I'm not 100% sure that this is going to work as you can see this is the piece of paper tissue paper in fact picking it up and I'm just going to notice how I've cut a V in the middle and two sloping edges so I'm hoping to put that V where her hands come together so hopefully that will sit just about there that's if this is going to work and that there so I've just got to wrap that around Sure, if it's going to be big enough, but there you go. I think it's going to work. I just need a little bit more super glue. Just to put on the other piece of paper. You see, the thing is with super glue, they'll turn that piece of paper into plastic and make it rock hard. There you go. So I've just got to round them corners over. Paint might hide the joint. So now it looks like she's wearing a skirt. So I've just got to touch all that paper up now with a little bit of more super glue, especially around the top area and then we can paint it it's amazing what you can do with a tiny piece of kitchen towel I've just transformed this figure from wearing jeans to putting on a skirt so a little bit more paint and uh, this little figure can go behind the counter um, so what shall I call her Mm, maybe Penny or Poppet, but uh, we shall see. Just there you go. And this is the counter finished, along with Penny. And um, what I've actually done, I, I've got a little glass counter there. You can see that she's still got a few iced buns left. Um, sandwiches have all gone, which is a shame. But um, there you go. 
So I think that little detail on its own can go into the refreshments room. Right, so let's have one last look at this week's uh, endeavours, as it were. It's not a bad little stash. Um, yeah, a bit fiddly, but uh, we, we got there in the end. Um, the only thing we can fit, like I said, is the counter. But um, <laughs> a lot of fiddly items there. The, the easier stuff, the tables and chairs, uh, we can look at that uh, next time. So yes, yeah, so we've got typewriter, three desk lamps, three telephones, a radio, and of course, penny behind the counter. So what we'll do, we'll stick the counter into the refreshments room and have one last look. This is not the best of angles to see the counter fitted into the refreshments room. But as you can see, the, the counter is flush with the bottom of the skirt and board. So that's a nice little recess there to fit the floor when we can fit the floor into the building. And if we just lift the camera over we might be able to see Penny at the counter. So there she is, I'll just try and zoom in. No, it's not working. Just come back a bit. Go forward a bit. Ah, there we go. So we can see the till and we can see the counter and the glass display cabinet. Now it's just a little tiny bit of plastic folded around and quite easy to make. So yeah, nice little detail for the refreshing room. Right, I think that's all from me. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Bye.